Today on this old house, I got some help rehanging an old door. You've heard of mobile homes? How about mobile stone walls? These are each about 6,000 pounds. What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice. This one right here is right on. Family that paints together stays together. Nice job. Where will a slab like this be used? The money's in the detail. That is beautiful. Hey, Mara, how are you? Good morning. I'm Kevin O'Connor, and welcome back to this old house here in Newton, Massachusetts, where we have a young couple who is trying to turn this century-old home into a comfortable house for three generations of their family. And along the way, they are trying to save as much money as they can. And so for them, that means throwing in with our crew. So up here on the second floor, Joe is actually working with Norm, putting a new door into the master suite, which is off the back of the house here. Uh, hey, Joe. Hey, Norm. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Kevin. Well, look at this, huh? So we've got a, a new opening, but an old door. Yeah, so this door used to be the closet door in Liz's old bedroom, and it's in great shape, so we figured we could reuse it in the master. Do you yeah. concur? Oh, yeah. We have to trim it a little bit, but it's going to work. All right, sounds like a good idea. Well, I got to meet Roger in the backyard, but this one here, that looks like a keeper to me. All right, Kevin. See you around. All right, let's put the door in the opening. Let's see how it looks. Make sure it's up against the side of the jam, nice and tight. Uh, okay, now if you look at the top, you can see it's tighter here than it is here. Yep. The sides look pretty good. And I think all we have to do here is take a measurement, put a mark at three quarters, and the same thing over here. Three quarters. Because the door might have lead paint, we're going to use respirators. tight to that side. Push it up. Ah, perfect. All right, Joe, so now we're going to do the hinges. Now, this door, the swing is going to change. It's going yep. to be just the opposite. So that's why these Dutchmen were added in to fill in the gap. Mm -hmm. So we're going to remortise for the new hinges. These are the new hinges, the part that goes on the door. So we're going to locate it right about here. So what I want to do is keep the same margin of the mortise they had before. So I've taken my combination square and set it to about a quarter inch. And I'm just going to draw a line right along this edge. Go a little bit further than I need. Now the mortise is a little bit bigger in length. So we'll just center this approximately halfway between. Get it right on that line. And then take utility knife and just score the top and bottom of the hinge. So now we have to make the mortise. And we could do that with a jig and a router, but I like to do it with my chisel. You know, give it a couple of taps. And we go to the other side, and you get to set it. And then I like to just go across the back. Across the grain is tough. With the grain is pretty easy. So now I'm going to go across and just make a whole series of cuts, like a couple taps, move it a quarter of an inch, a couple taps, all the way across. Now doing this makes the depth of the cut consistent and easier to remove the material for the moves. When you get to the end, give it another hit. So it's really just patience and taking your time. All 
All right, how's it going? Good. Thank you, Leah. See how it looks. Right. Flush. Flush. I think All we're right. ready to put some screws in. Can you hold it? Sure. Now, when I put the screws in, I like to favor this side of the hole so it pulls it tight to this and not away from it. So if you go on that side, you know it's going to be nice and tight. All right. Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial-free. Watch it all in the This Old House app and join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. Okay, get it in the jam again. And uh, now we want to shim it so we get the right space at the top of the door. All right. Yeah, that's good. good. So now we want to mark the location of the hinges. Okay. So I'm going to do, utility knife comes in handy again. I'm just going to go right at the bottom edge of the hinge there. The top. Mark there. Just hold the door so it doesn't right. fall on me. And we'll mark this one. Joe, these are a little tricky, so you guide the bottom end and I'll guide the top one. Good? Yep. All right, drop it down. Let's see how we did. Nice. Perfect. Came out well. Nice job. Thanks. Now you know how to hang a door. This is great. All right. Since our first day on the project, we have known a retaining wall was needed behind the new garage. Roger has found a company with a unique way of building stone walls. We're here to meet Troy. He's going to be building the stone walls for our project house. Good morning. Hey, Roger. Morning. How you doing? Good. I'm impressed. When I build a stone wall on site, I have stuff everywhere. It looks like you have a really efficient operation. We've got an extremely efficient process here. So for a job like yours, which would probably take you two to three weeks at to least on site, we're going to be able to come in and install it that morning. And that's going to save some time and money. Show me around. All right, let's go. So we've got some beautiful bulk field stone and other quarry products here, always on, uh, on site, ready to go. We've got Vermont Chesterfield. We've got a nice Moose Creek, which is a little more tan. You see the Rockport granite. We've got New England flat. We've got your Goshen stone. And what your client picked was the New England round field stone. What some people don't understand is this was a freestanding stone wall. Yeah, we use completely natural bulk field stone from old farm sites, um, new developments. They save all the old walls. Really nice looking stuff. Now, how about our walls? Are they built? Let's go check it out. Well, Roger, this is your wall. And this, uh, this is actually the back of it. Well, how do you build it differently than I do? All of our walls are built with molds and forms. It's a patent process, so I can't tell you all the details. But the masons, they come in, they set your stones face down. We set a grid of number five rebar and we pour a 4,000 PSI concrete, which you're seeing here. You can see here the nice natural stone top of the wall. And this is the geo grid, which will be pulled out at time of install. How much does each section weigh? These are each about 6,000 pounds. That's why we've got a custom lifting frame that we developed that lifts the walls from the back. Nothing ever touches the stone face or top. Well, here's your wall, Roger. Look at this. It still has all its moss and patina left. It's a really nice looking section of wall. I can't wait to see it on site. Now you can watch This Old House and Ask This Old House anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovations, 
and get step-by-step -step help projects all around the house. Best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available on your Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today. Roger, Stonewall Day, and normally you are back here with an army of guys and a mountain of boulders, and here you are raking all by yourself. I'd take every inch of this site if I was building these walls myself. But they're going to come in, and within an hour, we're going to have a whole wall set in place. I cannot wait to see this process. Neither can I. And so in terms of prep, what did you do and did you do anything different than if you were building this uh, in place? No, the same as if we were building it in place. We dug down two feet, we put in three quarter inch stone, and we really compacted it. That's gonna give us good granage, and this wall's not gonna move. Let's do it, let's get the other six in. Got left to do? Not much. The walls are in. All that's left is uh, a few pockets that we leave open. And you can see here in this entire stone wall that we've brought, we only need two or three of these to get rid of the joints. Oh, you're gonna push it right up in here. We uh, we stay the stones for each wall. Huh. It's designed for that little hole there. Homeowners will perfectly... never know. Yeah, seamless application. Yeah, yeah I, I'll be honest with you. While this thing was going in, we had a bunch of trades come up and they were thankful that Roger wasn't here for two weeks At with least piles of boulders buggering the whole site. I mean, this is amazing. We keep it nice and clean. Yeah. Well, I think the homeowners are going to love it, man. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. This was fun. All season long, we've been talking about the gap in the building trades. There are plenty of carpenters, plumbers, and electricians who are over 50, but there aren't enough young people. And that means that jobs in the trades go unfilled. Our Generation Next initiative is part of an industry-wide effort to solve that problem. And that's why we have come today to the Bolton Fairgrounds, just outside of Boston. Here, industry leaders are making their pitch to hundreds of high schoolers. It is a large event, and it was organized by Michelle Glasper. Michelle, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. So tell me about the event. So we have several hundred students coming today from schools around the state of Massachusetts to learn what it's like to be a remodeler when they get out of school. And what's the idea? They're going from station to station, and they're meeting the different trades they and contractors? Are. There's interactive building activities. They can learn how to do tiling, shingling, wow. framing, anything that you can imagine. How many exhibitors are you expecting to have here? We have about 35 different exhibitors throughout the event today. All different types of uh, things to show off? Absolutely. This is a CNC machine. Do you think some of them are seeing this technology maybe for the first time? In some cases it's for the first time, in others it's a reinforcement of what they've learned in class in a real life practical application. We've got instructors that will prep the site and the students come in in waves. Exactly. Very much hands on. That's the point of today. It's for them to get their hands involved, get dirty, and experience what this is like to, to do for a living. So here we have a demonstration for plumbing. We have two students who are in a contest. So connecting a toilet is a regular everyday activity, but these folks are in a race against time to, to install a toilet and we're gonna see who's gonna be the winner. Time is money in this That's business, right? right? They're gonna learn that. 
And you've got all sorts of classes going on. We sure do. Down here we've got one on framing. You can see the kids are getting really involved, hands on here, to build the flooring of a, a mini mock room, and the walls are going up, and then eventually they'll have a roof. What a great experience. So this is our environmental area. Students are coming here to learn about mold remediation. They are. Ron Pike, good to see you. Kevin, how you doing? Good I'm to see you. doing all right, boy. We are used to seeing you in our basements and attics doing our demolition and our remediation. You actually right. just helped us out a couple months ago with the mold. Right, right. What are you doing here? Well, we're enjoying the fresh air. A little, little better up here than it is down there sometimes. And we're also looking for help. Really? We are, we, we, we are having the hardest time now in the last 28 years we've been doing this business trying to hire and recruit. We have jobs open and waiting and having a hard time filling them. Boy, that says something, huh? And, and so if you do end up picking up one of these kids, I mean, what does their career path look like with you? Come in entry level, and again, it's a real, it's, it is a true career path. If you're a little bit aggressive within a couple of years, maybe two or three years, you could be a supervisor making good money, and then you move on up to, up to management. All my management team, they all started with me. Some have been with me for 25 years. Hmm. And uh, you could be making good, solid money as, as much as six figures. Wow, six figures. Right. And nope. they don't have the college debt. No college debt, yeah. yeah. Boy, that says it all right there, right. doesn't it? Sure. All right, and so what's the demonstration you're putting on today? What we're doing is we're simulating the removal of uh, mold off of an attic sheathing, uh, but we're using paint, a little bit safer for the students. This is a dry ice blasting process. What we're doing is, is, is like sandblasting, but using dry ice pellets. They blow the mold right off the sheathing. It takes it right down by the roots, nice and clean, no chemicals. It's easier, less labor. And, uh, and a very nice, efficient job. Leaves, leaves the plywood looking almost brand new. And this is a student doing the work? Yes, it is. Well, I think you probably have got one of the most exciting uh, booths right here, Ron. And the noisiest one, too, Kevin. Always good to see you. Thank Thanks. you. Likewise. So, Michelle, how do you guys measure success for this event? So the idea here is to connect these students with the jobs that are out there that we need so desperately. And right. so the idea is to get them into co-ops and apprenticeships and on to, on to entry-level positions. Well, you did this last year. I mean, did that actually happen? We did in a number of cases. The students who attended the events oh. went on to a co-op position with the exhibitors. Boy, that is great to hear. And you know what? Seeing all these kids out here, that is great to see as well. Absolutely. Appreciate the tour. Thank you. And thanks for organizing it. Thank you. are following the progress of our idea house in Rhode Island and up here on the third floor this is where the kids are gonna go hey Ryan hey Jeff how are you Kevin how are you all right so a little bit of a bedroom up here tucked away yeah there's a bedroom we've got a built-in bed going here with some drawers underneath very nice and they're gonna slide into these compartments here which we bookended with this shelving yeah, so built-ins right there. You got shiplap on the wall. Yep, and we're going to put mahogany on the ceiling. Oh, very cool. Ready to do that now? Ready to go. Right. All right, next we're going to install a valance in front of this bookshelf. So to do so, we're going to clamp on a couple of blocks to help us hold it in place. All right, coming to your side. glue in the back of this cleat and that's going to support a plywood top for the bed to sit on. You like it? Alright, we got the base to the bed that we made in the shop. Okay. We're going to slide this into place. Slide this in.
And we're just going to go about a quarter of an inch past that style. A little bit of a recess. Yep, a little bit of a reveal there. So the design is obviously two drawers underneath. It'll accommodate drawers. And we're just going to fasten to the rail with some screws. All right, we'll set the top in. Ryan, you're going to go low. Kevin, you'll go high. Watch your fingers. All right, just lower it down. Catch it from the bottom, and that's it. Look at that, huh? All right, so one of three. Yep, two to go. Nice. Good job, guys. Looks great. Thank you. All right. Back here at the Newton house, we've got some built-ins of our own, some of them which are original to the house, like this china cabinet right here. And believe it or not, Liz's grandmother's china is still in it. And Tommy, now that the hardwood floor is down, this one was able to be set back in place. You think that was original too? I think it was original also, but we had a little bit of a challenge trying to set this back in place because the house is leaning in. This wall is out of plumb mm. by about an inch and a half. Old wall here, new wall there. Right, new wall here, that wasn't too much of a problem. So we actually took the casing off of the outside perimeter of the cabinet yeah. and we put a miter on it, giving us a 45 degree piece right here. We added a new piece and scribed it to the wall. That gave us a piece that was straight all the way down. We scribed it tight to the wall and it gives us a board 90 degrees off the wall and makes it easy for the baseboard to end. Okay, so that one can be tacked in. And then this side? On this here? side, as I said, the house was out of plumb, but it's out of plumb an inch and a half. Wow. So the filler on this side had to be a lot wider and it had to be tapered much wider on the bottom than it is on the top. Okay. So now when we put that in, we scribed it to the wall. So now we have a nice tight fit. We'll tack that off. Looks pretty good. Get some paint on that, it'll look like it was always there. A lot easier to install when the china's not in it, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right, so I know next time uh, Roger's got a big problem out front that he's going to be addressing. And Liz, our homeowner, is going to start helping with some tiling. All right. Well, until then, I'm Kevin O'Connor. I'm Massey Ford. And I'm Tom Silva. For this old house. Next time on This Old House. So you don't like this Norway maple? I don't like this Norway maple. We looked at the trunk and there's some damage to it, meaning it could fall. We'll take care of this tree before it takes care of those houses. Our homeowner gets a lesson in tile work. Great. The young apprentices who have been with us for much of this job, well, today they cast off to their future projects. And no matter where you are in your lives, you are now and forever part of the This Old House crew. That's next time on This Old House. Thanks for watching. This Old House has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.